Pardon me. Didn't see you there. Please, come sit. You know, it's not often I get to talk to people anymore. What well, with being a doctoral student in the middle of a pandemic? <laughs> Seems like the only thing to keep us company these days are TV shows and memes. Speaking of memes, have I ever told you about the time that I went viral? <laughs> of course I haven't. Well, uh, the year was 2018 and I was in the middle of a class about the music of Steve Reich. I fancied myself a funny man and I made a video of clapping music by Steve Reich using only the clapping from the theme song of Friends. I showed it to a few of my friends and uh, two days later I had 40,000 views and more comments than I could count. One of those comments stood out to me though. A man had commented, I wonder what it is about Steve Reich that makes his meme potential so high. I stayed up many nights thinking about that question. What is it that makes music memeable? What is it about a cultural artifact that makes it more or less primed for a life among the dankest and creamiest memes out there? Well, <laughs> it's been two years thinking about that question now. Since then, I haven't really come up with any answers. So, I did what any reasonable man would do. I exploited my friends, students, and colleagues for content. What makes music memeable? Um. Um. That's a good question. I spoke with some Gen Zs and fellow millennials about this question. Not necessarily to find the answer outright, but to find out how these folks interacted with memes, what memes they like, and why they like them. I find them mostly on Facebook. Occasionally I'll look on Reddit, but like pretty rarely. Just, I guess, Facebook pages. I'm an avid Reddit user, so I get most of my memes through different subreddits of different things that I follow. Uh, yeah. Any any favorite meme groups or meme I mean, pages? like, 433 is great, classical music shit posting are like the classic ones. Piano loving teens, oh. liggity piano lovers, I don't oh, remember, oh, yeah. I uh, can't. Major supplier is just too sad. And like, yeah, no memes for liggity loving team. Similar, like, you know, I follow Classic FM on Facebook. I feel like there are more niche ones, but I'm not super in those. Memes are everywhere. No matter where you go on the internet, and even a lot of places that you go in real life, chances are you're going to be consuming a meme of some kind. But contrary to common perception, memes aren't just silly pictures that we find on the internet. So before we ask the question, what makes music memeable, we should first ask the question, what even is a meme? The term meme was first coined by Dr. Richard Dawkins in his book The Selfish Gene to describe discrete ideas or behaviors that are passed from person to person non-genetically. When thinking of memes in their present-day colloquial definition with that frame of mind, we can quickly see how memes aren't just silly pictures. They are an important part of our interpersonal relationships, our artistic interests and influences, and our socio-political view of the world. While memes are often silly and not meant to be taken seriously, Memes as a cultural phenomenon deserve serious analysis. While I would never be able to cover everything I would want to about memes or even music memes specifically in one video, I want to note this. Memes are a form of social and socio-political commentary. They are cultural ideas spread from person to person with each interpretation and incorporation taking on new life. Traceable members of the actor network theory. So what makes something memeable? Let's ask my friends about their meme consumption and see if we can find some answers. Two types of music memes work really well. Classical music memes that play, that have puns in them. Mm -hmm. I think, I'm not a huge pun fan, but I think the amount of puns that have been used with composers' names is hysterical. And I find, sometimes I find those like play on words, like musical play on words, to be kind of a little silly, sometimes just stupid. I think in terms of like genre of memes, I think anything that has like a video with a short clip of the music in it, with either like, like audio editing or something that we as musicians can like actually do. Like a funny video that goes viral and somebody ultimately arranges it into a song mm. with like auto-tune and stuff. Like, I think that takes a lot of skill to like do something super well to the point where that video then goes viral. Like the toxic video of people like, the, the person like going to the splits on the ground, things like that where we're like, we're making the music or it's like a recording of the music over some other funny video. I think those are really good. Mainly videos and one time this trombone is um, sneezing into his horn while performing. In talking to friends, there seems to be a common thread. There's like a simple concept that you're trying to get across, 
Something has to be like salient and memorable. Uh, those are uh, that are more relatable to life. And uh, add like a good a degree of depth to it, mm -hmm. and that's how like a meme can be born. When you take something really iconic and um, that everybody sort of understands, but you take it out of context. Bro, and then from there, it just becomes extrapolated and expanded upon until it's like clearly unrecognizable, but the internet community can be like, I know where that came from. It has to be short. It's got to be like, could fit in Vine, group Vine. Memes are referential. In order to comment upon a person, place, thing, or idea, you must first have a person, place, thing, or idea worth commenting upon. Memes seem to be about things that are culturally significant, easily identifiable, and that have recent media published about them. But certain things become memes more readily than others, and something that's worth commenting upon and something that's memeable are not always the same. For example, on March 20th of this year, or two weeks ago from the time of this filming, Netflix released two original documentaries, A Life of Speed and Tiger King. The former is a documentary about Formula One driver Juan Manuel Fangio. He was culturally significant, easy enough to identify, and there was a recent piece of media about him. So why is my Facebook feed filled with memes about f***ing tiger murder? Talking to folks at my university was helping, but I still didn't feel like I was close to an answer to my question. So I called an expert. I'm one of the admins of the Facebook group Classical Music Shitposting. You are probably an expert in classical music memes. <laughs> I would say I'm a student of classical music memes like everyone else. I don't actually create that much content. I um, I see myself as more of a meme dealer. Can that be a real job, please? I, honestly, like, if that could be my job, I would be so good at it. What makes something memeable? It has to be broad enough for a lot of people to connect with it, but it has to be specific enough that each individual can still see part of themselves in it. Um, in that sense, it's like your horoscope. <laughs> Horoscopes are memes. Yes, I'm into astrology, shut up. In talking to Rory, I started to realize that the question, what makes something memeable, is far more complex than just a list of adjectives. I think what makes a good meme is, is this meme doing what it's intended to do. If you try to go any more specific with that question, your answer will be, it's subjective. Because memes are so situational, and they're, they're really... They're about the creators, they're about the communities that they come from. It's not enough for something to be culturally significant or easily identifiable. Memes are an art form, and like any art form, it has different genres and communities, each with their own ideas about quality and validity. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's all about what we're exposed to. No great piece of music or art appeals to everyone. Greatness is often subject to niche appeal. Well, I don't know if you're familiar with me IRL on, on Reddit. That is like my brand of humor of just like complete nonsense. Mm -hmm. Just like splattered onto a page that makes my brain chuckle like that. I feel like my favorite memes are the ones where you have like something Super tangential. <laughs> That's what I'm looking for in a meme. Something completely senseless, but completely hysterical at the same time. Very vaguely directed to this one composer and their one piece, and if you happen to get it, you will find it absolutely hilarious, but like 90% sure. of people will not. Saturation. How many people know about this particular musical thing? How pervasive is it? So in order to understand what makes music memeable, we need to understand the culture that that music represents. I rather enjoy that more, more and more people are sort of like naming classical music nowadays, because usually it just gives like people sort of like a serious and like, I don't want to talk with you, I just want to play my music sort of by, like as classical musicians. But I feel like it connects with the mainstream a little more without like necessarily compromising what we do. So in the world of classical music, Memeable seems to indicate pieces, musicians, or concepts that are recognizable, quantifiable, and malleable enough for two people to make a joke about. So, like, the lick is something that almost everyone knows. The Dies Irae, the opening of Beethoven 5, Never Gonna Give You Up, All Star by Smash Mouth, um, Eric Whitaker. <laughs> it's easy to write off memes as insignificant often because we see them as a lesser form of art, if we even see them as art in the first place. 
But I have to say, I'm with Shia LaBeouf on this one. Are memes art? Definitely. Yeah, anything that moves you is art. If we think about this in terms of fiction or poetry, take the sonnet. You're, you're, you're presenting one thing and then you're like taking it in a different direction in the second half of the poem. Humans like binaries. <laughs> We're wired to think about things in terms of black and white. And so there's this, um, there's something that's very satisfying when we're given information in a particular way and then we're told hey actually here's another way and uh, and our brains go oh cool i like that i'm gonna share it memeing is a medium which allows anyone to recontextualize or reconceptualize ideas events or works of art with a degree of specificity and relevance that is not common in other forms of artistic innovation because th things things that we find funny or memeable right now won't be funny or memeable in three months time they wouldn't have been funny or memeable three months ago and once something becomes a meme it becomes an exploring ground for new ideas i feel like a lot of times it's just something that is very cringy at start so it just kind of just makes you very creative and you just have all sorts of ideas mm. uh, and how you could use that particular meme for communicating your ideas and jokes Memes can be complex or simple, visual or auditory, general or specific, straightforward or absurd. So when there isn't a concrete answer to the question, what makes music memeable? Perhaps the better question is, what doesn't? And, and speaking of All Star and therefore Shrek films, um, I, do, I, I want this to go in the video that Eric Whitaker is Prince Charming from Shrek 2. I, I feel that I think I saw a meme about Eric Whitaker and Prince Charming. Like I think he, I think he might have posted it himself. Actually, don't worry. This isn't. This isn't probably going into the YouTube video. And anything we do, I can edit and post. Like I'll probably have a lot less Duncan in the actual video. <laughs> no, no, you should keep all of the Duncan in. Duncan, sponsor me. <laughs> <laughs>